All right, so I'm back. Uh, I'm going to narrate this time uh, after the fact, um, but uh, this was definitely uh, more successful. Uh, let's just take a look. Uh, so uh, we did get uh, an ellipse, and this can be um, broken down even more into two smaller ones. Uh, the transmitter is actually right there. So let's see. Let's take a look. And this is the this is the database that I'm looking at after the fact. Uh, but if I jump back over here, and I did record a video while um, I was going through this, but uh, let me let me see a couple things first. Uh, I should have had three devices. One was going to be stationary. Uh, but that didn't work out due to um, just enough phones with hotspots and whatnot. And anyways, so it ended up being two mobile devices. Uh, ran into an issue where I sent, and I'll go ahead and start playing this. Uh, let's see, just so you can kind of get an idea of what this looked like. But uh, a team went out, and I forgot to put GPSD uh, for the heading, so that team came back and... Um, I fixed that, which required another sync. Uh, so again, lesson should be checked to make sure uh, GPS, uh, everything is getting information into DF Aggregator. Uh, you can see here I'm remoting in still to the um, PIs through VNC. And in some cases, it was just really slow, especially when you enabled uh, Spectrum Display. Uh, but they were still working. And uh, let's see, uh, I, I do have some pictures of the setup. I'll try and get those uploaded after the fact. I was just trying to think if there was any lessons learned uh, from the last one that was fixed uh, this time. Uh, I did pull in the latest DF aggregator and had the latest uh, extended software on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can see now it's uh, generating lobs and um, those lobs uh, could probably be more refined um, based on the antenna array. Some of the antennas, uh, I, I have the actual magnetic antennas that have a, a flexible uh, or a pivot on the base, which is not good. So, you know, I uh, took some tape and basically popsicle sticks ar around there to keep that upright. Uh, still probably could have did more refinement on the uh, actual spacing on the antenna array, uh, the fear uh, tap or decimation settings. I'm uh, still um, trying to figure that out. Uh, and then here uh, I realized um, if you set the uh, settings in such a way it'll show uh, all the uh, intersections which generally started um, populate more down when we were closer to the uh, antenna itself. Uh, let me see if I can fast forward a little bit here. Um, I think you'll start seeing more results as we um, came get, came down closer to the tower, and then on the way back out. So you can see we do have a heading. Uh, Latin long updating and let's see So green dots are where there's some intersections. So you can see, uh, you know, obviously the one vehicle was really close to the tower. Uh, so um, I, I do see uh, this being, uh, well, working a lot better had we, um, well, really just got our settings really good on uh, the signal, uh, especially 106.1, I think it was. Um, and now thinking about it, that might be a little off. Uh, let's see. So, wow. 
Well, I'll go ahead and admit it. Um, yeah, I think I had it sent in the panel uh, 1061, uh, which explains why the high spike was a little off to the side. It should have been 1065. So, so um, it was still there within the spectrum uh, window. Uh, but uh, I think we would have got even better results if that had been shifted over uh, a little bit. And the rest of this uh, video is, uh, and you see what I mean by that was a little off to the side there. We had put in 106.1. So, um, but it, uh, it definitely uh, came up with a lot of the intersections right uh, around the antenna area. And let me see. The rest of this video is just really uh, driving around. Uh, so I'll, I'll stop that. I think we've got the, the point there. Come back over. Look at the database live after the fact here and so we can see how this is uh, gonna work the green dot I believe um, is really kinda like the strong point there and you can see the tower is just a little bit off if I open this up to four still uh, given an idea of where it's at let me take it back down to three And then the uh, minimum power and the confidence levels, of course, those can be adjusted. And uh, yeah, so now we can see we're getting lobs and we got the ellipse. So I'm going to end the video there. I'll try and get pictures uploaded. Again, I'll hopefully run this one more time uh, with three vehicles. Uh, double check that. Uh, frequency again and uh, just a lot of moving parts and um, you know the more uh, members uh, that are using the equipment are familiar with it the easier it's going to be um, especially when you have to uh, sync the system again and removing the antennas and putting the terminators on so all right well there you go there's uh, attempt two